Hello, drummers and other creatures. Are you getting the hang of being able to play a bunch of eighth note beats and playing a load of songs with the hi-hat or the ride going one and two and three and four and like this. And so on, like this. Do you want to give a little bit of extra spice to your playing? Do you need to maybe explore a few different hi-hat patterns? I'm gonna look at one of them today. The offbeat hi-hat pattern, the one that goes on the upbeats, offbeat, on the ands, basically, something like this. Too much noise. Oh, anyway, playing the hi hat on the ands or playing the ride on the ands, riding on the ands on the upbeats one and two and three and four and. Now, no matter how good you've got at playing those eighth notes, you might not want to just throw yourself in there and try and play those ands. You're going to omit all the numbers the one, two, three, and four. So, first things first. It's probably a good idea. You're, you're getting good at playing these rock beats now. So just remind yourself, beat with uh, bass on one and three, snare on two and four. That's pretty straightforward. And let's see if we can put the hi-hat ands there. Um, just this one, let's just throw ourselves into that, right? So you'll notice that in order to get the ands to happen, we're not gonna be coinciding. So this might be your first ever linear groove, right? Because I'm gonna play one on the bass, I'm gonna play and on the hi-hat, two on the snare, and on the hi-hat. Alternating, bass, hi-hat, snare, hi-hat. One, and two, and three, and four, and. Do it a little bit faster. Now, that might come easy, or it, it might take a little, playing it slowly, being relaxed, it might feel a little bit weird. You might be able to play it all right, but it'll feel a bit strange. And I recommend it, it's a good idea. Uh, I like it always try and count. Maybe you, you want to just count the one, two, three, and four and feel the ands. Or maybe you just count one and two and three and four and, and, and kind of do that accentuation in your voice. One and two and three and four and, okay? One and two and, like that, exactly. If you sing it, you can play it. If you, it's all of that. Use your voice. It's the source of, of all music, really, isn't it? Now, if we've got that, we're good, we're, we're, we're starting to feel that cool offbeat feeling. Next, let's go to the, the second money beat, the bass on the one, and then the three, and the end of three. Snare still on two and four, so we'd have this pattern. I think it's the most common beat in all of rock and pop music. Let's see if we can put our ands there. Now, at this point, it might be a little bit challenging because you've got the three and the and, and the three is bass on its own, but then the and of three is bass plus the hi-hat. 
And sometimes you might find you need to work out the relationship between those two things. So, as with all things, work nice and slowly. I would count as much as you need to and let the flow develop with that. So that's a good one to try. And then once you've got the three and the and of three, you can add the and of one as well. So you're playing the sort of we will rock you beat or you can play the one and the and and then just the three on its own. Next, a very common beat would be to play the one, the and of two and then the three. So this is like so. Okay, so we've got the one, the and of two, and the and of three. Now, the sort of inverse of that, the upside down version of that, would be the one, the three, and the and of four. So it sounds like this. Highway to hell. gratuitous crash. Okay, work on that and then you can start to figure out any kind of uh, eighth note beat variation. So stuff with um, quite a lot of ands is always good because I don't know, once, once you're missing out those numbers on the hi-hat, it feels kind of a little bit empty. And so for example, if you play bass on the one, the and of three and the and of four, you have this pattern. Let's put the hi-hat in there. And it can feel like there's a, there's a whole chasm of time waiting between the one and then when the and of three happens. And when you don't have all those hi-hat notes filling in all of the gaps, it can feel ooh, a little bit of a wait. Um, a different one to do maybe would be, uh, let's say, I don't know, one, the and of two, and the and of three. So slightly different, slightly less gappy. Ooh, that was the wrong one. Let's try again. Uh, the one, the and of two, and the and of three. Now, work until you've got a whole bunch of eighth note variations on the bass drum. The next thing you can do is to maybe double up some snare notes in the sense of playing, say, the two and the and of two. And again, you'll have a scenario where you're going to hit the snare on the two on its own, but then with the hi-hat uh, on the and of two. So you'd be going, for example, this. And then work on that and mix in some of the bass drum patterns that you've already worked on and see if you can get that to flow nicely. Then the, let's say the four and the and of four, which is the same as the and of two in um, coordination sense, but rhythmically it feels a little bit different. So we'd have something like this. And another one to try would be maybe the snare on the and of three in the four. So you'd have this. Uh, what am I thinking? OK, 
right? So there's there's a whole bunch of interactions between the, the hi-hat on the offbeat there, on the ands, and uh, bass drum coincident and not coincident, snare drum coincident and not coincident. And I would work through all the different options. I'll attach a PDF and link to it at the bottom uh, or in the description box that's just underneath the video that you're watching. And that'll allow you to not just conceptualize these exercises, but you can read and, and play along. Uh, now, one of the interesting things to do is once you've got the hang of, of any kind of new groove is to put it into the context of um, playing like, like you would in a song. So what I would do is then play a four bar phrase and I would want to crash at the beginning of every four bar phrase. Now, what's interesting here is ordinarily, I'm not gonna be playing my hi-hat or my ride on the one. So the, the crash on the one adds a kind of unusual one that's not there otherwise. So that can be a little bit challenging. In other words, instead of going and, so I'm gonna hit the bass on the one, one and, now I'm gonna be going one on the crash, so there's an extra, I'm basically bringing back that, uh, the, the downbeat feel. And uh, if you've just sort of like programmed your mind to be playing only on the ands, only on the upbeats, um, it can be a little bit tricky. So take it slowly when you're doing this. And again, we'll go back to bass on one and three, snare on two and four, and maybe I'll, I'll sort of cue myself up. I, I'll play a bar uh, without the crash, and then I'm gonna crash on the one of every bar following that, just to get myself used to it a little bit. So I'd be going like this. So you end up having a string of, of three right hand, in my case, right hand strokes, okay? Um, and then once you've got the hang of that, once that's sort of feeling all right, then make a four bar phrase. One, two, three, four. so on and so on, slow and steady. So you've given yourself a bunch of bass drum variations, you've worked out the coordination there, slow count. You've given yourself a couple of snare drum options there, and then you've added the crash. And now make sure that you can play really comfortably in four bar phrases, and then of course, add a fill and make sure that you can keep all of that going. At first, decide a pattern you want to work on but as soon as you're starting to feel a bit comfortable with things, have a bit of an improvise. Once you've got all that lined up, go over to the ride and have a go at, at doing the same thing there. Uh, something that would be very commonly the case is if you were playing just the, the off beats on the ride, it would be to play the bell. For better or for worse, but because we want to really hi-hat, no, hi-hat, highlight the kind of that offbeaty nature, that sort of jumpy, bouncy feel, and the bell seems to jump out in the right sort of way. Let's have a listen. Gratuitous crash. Anyway, work through all of the same stuff on the ride bell, I'm not saying you, you shouldn't play just the regular area of the ride. But you tend to get this very long sound and, and it, it waters down the effect of playing all those upbeats. I don't know what my left hand's doing there, anyway. All of that. Then, finally, put it all together and play four bar phrases on the hi-hat side, on the ride side, and make sure that you feel really comfortable playing a crash at the beginning of every phrase and a fill at the end. Something like this. <laughs> Two, three. <laughs>
And there you have it. That's the five star Super Zin. Someone's suggested I should polish it. I'm thinking about it. Anyway, that's it. That is the first alternate hi-hat pattern. Uh, the first one that popped into my head anyway that I thought would be fun to make a video about. And it's, it's a really fun feeling thing to do. So again, for people who've got the hang of, stop saying again, for the people who've got the hang of playing the regular eighth note beats and you're riding along nicely on your hi-hat and or your ride, it's a nice variation to bring in. It's fairly challenging to, to get the hang of, but once you can do it, it's a very satisfying thing to play. Uh, and that pretty much wraps all of that up. Thank you very much for watching this. Let me know what you thought. Did you get on with it all right? Did I forget to post the PDF in the uh, description box? Let me know if I did. Otherwise, I think it's time for you to get off and practice.